Yes, sir, ladies and gentlemen, the Premier League is back. It's been about 50-something days since the Premier League ended, so it doesn't even seem real. But today, I'm going to talk about my Premier League predictions for the season coming back. West Brom, Fulham, Leeds United all joining the party with a tons of other storylines taking place. And fun fact, it's been a shorter period of time for the Premier League end to now the Premier League start the amount of time that I haven't gotten a haircut. But that doesn't matter because you don't need to get a haircut to talk soccer. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to start from the bottom from 20th place, go all the way up to who I think is going to win the whole league this year. One of the best leagues in the world. Let's get it started. 20th place, I have West Bromwich Albion. I just don't think they have what it takes. Dean Ghana, I think, was a very good, you know, permanent pickup for West Brom, but I just don't think they have much going forward other than Dion Ghana now and Matias Pereira. I just Charlie Austin, Robson Canoe, I mean they're both good players, but they're both pretty they're both 31. How much can they actually produce? It, I just I'm not exactly sold on them. Southern and twentieth. They could, I think, interchange with Fulham at nineteenth, as once again I just don't think they have the strongest of squads. I am more impressed with their squad than West Brom's, the likes of Mitrovic. Joe Bryan, I think, is a very talented player. Tom Kearney's back in the Premier League. Couldn't do much the first time, but he's older, more matured, a different player. I also really like the Mario Mario Lamina loan deal that they made. So I think it's possible that they could stay up even, but it depends on how much they can actually, you know, do stuff. Anthony Robinson, I think, is also a very good signing at left back, but we'll have to wait and see. At 18th place, I have Aston Villa. I think they have a great attack, but they've done nothing to fix their shaky defense at all. Last year, that was their big problem. Their attack was good going forward, and now they haven't really signed anyone to make sure that their defense is any better. So I just don't see them staying up, mainly because they're so reliant on the likes of Jack Grealish and a little bit of McGinn, who got injured last year. The fact that he's coming back, maybe he doesn't get injured for as long, but if Jack Grealish gets injured, then they have almost nothing going forward, and their defense is not very good, in my opinion. So that's why I have them as the third team that will be going down. Right out of the relegation zone, I have West Ham United. I think West Ham United could struggle again. I think they have such a talented squad that it doesn't really make sense that they're struggling. But with you know the management happening, the fact that they just signed De- or sold Dion Ghana for really no reason uh, other than to give it to West Brom, I really have no idea why they would do that. But I just think they're too talented of a side to get relegated. I don't know how they're going to... Management is just not very good... But I still think they're going to stay up because of their the talent in their squad. Above them, I have Brighton. I think they could struggle, but I think the return of Ben White to the team, I think that could solve a little bit of their defensive issues. I think Veltman and Lalana are both very good, cheap pickups. And the real question I have about Brighton is Neil Malpe. I'm not sure he can be a starting striker in the Premier League. He did well last year, but can he really be the guy that you are relying on to score those goals for you? I'm not exactly entirely sure about that. Above them, this might be a little bit of a surprise, but you don't want to just be boring in these. Sheffield United, I think, are not going to have quite as good of a season as they did last year, and really just for one reason. Aaron Ramsdale is good, but he's not Dean Henderson. Dean Henderson was probably the best goalkeeper in the Premier League last year, if not one of them, one of the top goalkeepers, and they should still be solid like they were last year and with their defensive style of play. They have a very good team, but... I just don't think, I think Dean Henderson, it just can't be overstated how important Dean Henderson was to that side and how much he did for them. Ramsdale's good though, so they could be a little bit higher than 15th. Above them, I have newcomers Leeds United in 14th. I think they have a very strong squad. They signed Rodrigo, who's Spain's number nine. Very strong striker that I think is going to score 10 plus goals for them. Huge for them. And I, I think they could easily be higher on this list, but as newcomers, it can't. It's not always going to be a breeze, you know. And I think this Leeds United team is a little bit more of an attacking style team, a little bit more of a pressing team, which might find it hard in the Premier League against tougher opposition. But you know, last year you saw the likes of Sheffield United. They could have a similar season, but like I'm saying, because they're more attacking, more you know, pro- positive minded, I should say, they might not get as much success as Sheffield United at this top level. But I still expect them to do really well. Above them, you might be surprised I haven't said them yet, but I think Crystal Palace could have a very good year this year. I think Eze from QPR is a very, very good signing. Batshuayi just came in from Chelsea again. 
I think Batshuayi is kind of the key to them being this high. I, I'm pretty high on Batshuayi. He hasn't been very good at Chelsea, but... Or, I mean, he's actually been okay at Chelsea, but at Belgium, he looks like a completely different player, kind of similar to Lukaku at times at Man United. At Belgium, he was just a different player. But if he can be a 10-plus goal striker, I think it can start, they can... Sub- I think they can surprise some people uh, this season if he's able to do that with the likes of Zaha on their team. They just have a good squad through and through. So I think they could be in relegation battle, but I think they're going to be more mid-table. Above them, I have Southampton, and the big question with Southampton is can Danny Ng repeat what he did last year? I don't think he necessarily can do that, but I think he can get close to that. I think Danny Ings is a very good player, and as we all know, in the Premier League, you need a top striker to really make it. That's why I had Leeds United higher. That's why... This team, I think, is going to be high as well. And they did lose Pierre-Emil Hoiberg, which I think is a big, pretty big deal. He was a very strong player for them, and they haven't really replaced him with any signings. So we'll have to wait and see how they actually go about replacing him. But I still think Southampton have a good squad and will be ending up in 12th. 11th place, I have Burnley. They haven't made any signings yet, but they have Sean Dykes. And somehow, no matter if they make signings or not, they end up in mid-table. So here they are at 11th place. Bit. 11th place basically is mid-table as you can be now another part team that i think are going to surprise people this year is newcastle united i think they made very shrewd signings in both ryan frazier and callum wilson their big problem last year was being able to score goals and it wasn't that big of a problem i think the likes of miguel marone has brought something different to this team i think saint maximin is a very very talented winger pacey and now you put callum wilson and ryan frazier into that mix i think that's a very talented squad that are going to get 10th in my opinion, and I don't think they'll be close to getting relegated. They might, and I think their underrated squad already on top of those good signings are going to put them to maybe higher heights than they're used to recently, even without getting those new owners. Now, Leicester City, this is this is a tough one. So th- this is kind of tough because once you, there's the mid table where they all can basically be interchangeable, and then you get up to the top, you know, Fourth to ninth, it could be any team because that's how talented these teams are becoming with new signings and how they've been performing. I have Leicester City in ninth, and this is something that I'm not even sure about when I when I decided to put them there. You know, this is something Leicester City, Everton, Wolves, Tottenham, even Arsenal, they're all kind of interchangeable depending on how well of a season they have. But Leicester City, I'm just not sure about Leicester City. They lost Chilwell, which I think is a massive loss for them. They bought Castagna. I'm not exactly sure. He's normally a right back. He can play left back. Can he really replace Chilwell? I don't know. That's going to be questionable. Um, And Vardy's getting old. I still think Vardy will be good. But there's just a lot of question marks. But if they perform with the likes of James Madison, they still have Tielemans. They have a very good team. And Didi. I mean, this team is very, very good. So to put him in ninth, I'm almost second-guessing myself right now. But they could easily be challenging for Champions League. Um, you know what? I mean, I'm even going to change this. I, I don't agree with what I put here. I'm actually ninth place. I'm going to put Everton. So they bought a whole new midfield. They have very talented players and they have a very good attack. They could really surprise, but I'm not sure about Everton's defense. The signing of Nkunku could help, but I think their defense is a little too shaky for them to be any higher than ninth, I guess. Eighth place. See, this is where it gets tough. Wolves or Leicester City is kind of the decision here. I think I'm going to put... Leicester City in 8th, just because I'm not sure about them, like I said. And then in 7th place, I'm going to put Wolves, as I already had it. They're such a good team. I wouldn't be surprised once again if they're making Europa League over Tottenham, who I have in 6th. But they should only continue to grow under Nuno uh, Nuno Santo. And the signing of Fabio Silva is a very good signing for now and for the future. Raul Jimenez, Adama Traore, Diego Jota. This team is very, very talented, and they should make a lot of top teams struggle this year. Now, in sixth place, like I said, I have Tottenham Hotspur. I think they have too good of a squad to put them any lower than this. They have Jose Mourinho, who somehow figures out how to get teams in good positions. Now, sixth place is not very good for Jose. He's going to be wanting, you know, to get to the title. I don't think their squad's good enough for that. But I do really like their signings. They're proven Premier League signings in Mac Doherty and pierre Emil Hoiberg. I think Hoiberg is a very good player. I'm very high on him. Docker D has been a very good right back. Serge Aurier was one of their weaker links last year to put Docker D in there. I think is a very, very good signing. And we'll have to wait and see. I think they also bring something new to Tottenham. Something that they need. They have stars that don't really, aren't really gritty stars. You know, these players are coming in. They're going to put a lot of grit into the locker room. They're going to bring that in. I think that's very positive. 
Now, above them in fifth place, I have their North London counterparts in Arsenal. Mikel Arteta has transformed this team. I think just Mikel Arteta alone puts them in the spot. Their team is good, and I think Gabriel and Saliba will do enough to help their defensive woes, and their talent up front is undeniable as long as Aubameyang stays. He is a very talented player. Him along with Nicola Pepe, Lacazette, as long as all these players stay, of course. Bukayo Saka, this team is very talented with Ceballos in the middle. They still have him. If Ganduzi stays, I really like him. Torreira, this team's very talented. I mean, maybe Ozio comes in at some point. But for that reason, I have him in fifth. I don't think they're quite good enough to go any higher. Now, top four. This is a tough one, but it almost says it's... Uh, see, it's tough. But fourth place, I'm going Manchester United. I think they're going to make Champions League again. They were so strong after the restart. Bruno Fernandes is so good. Donny Van Beek is a very good start. Donny Van de Beek is a very good signing, but I'm not sold on their defense at all. You know, or their goalie, to be completely honest. Like, De Gea was great when De Gea was great. Is he great anymore? I don't know, but the good thing is they still have Dean Henderson now. They brought him back, gave him a new contract. He should be maybe help their, their goalkeeper in defensive woes, but I just... I'm not really sold on Harry Maguire. I'm definitely not sold on Luke Shaw at left back. Juan Basaka is a great right back. And then their other center back is kind of up in the air. Is it Lindelof? Is it another player? I mean, you don't know. The team is just not very solid in the defense. And that's why I have in fourth. And Chelsea, I have in third. Unbelievable transfer window. Too much talent from all of these players for them to really flop, I think. I'm once again not sold on their defense. They got Thiago Silva. I'm not necessarily sold on him. If he can do well, all right. Other than that, Tamori might be over to, off to Everton. I think he's one of their better center backs. Zuma, maybe. I, it's just not a very good defense. Very good signing in Ben Chilwell. That does help the defense out instead of Mark, it being Marcus Alonso. As Pliqueta is getting kind of old, who do you play? You know, stuff like that. I'm just not sold on their defense. But holy crap, they're like maybe a couple defenders away from being true title contenders. Kai Havertz, Kristen Pulisic, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, all on the same team? Are you kidding me? That team's going to be insane. Timo Werner? Like, yo, that team is going to be stacked up top. It's going to be their defense that's going to hold them back, I think. Now, second and first. Now, you might call me biased because I'm a Liverpool fan. I have Manchester City in second. And and to be honest with you, this is going to be, I think this is going to be very similar to two years ago. It's going to be a one, two-point race. They're going to be fighting back and forth. If they struggle, other teams could step up. But Manchester City have bought in new signings. Nathan, Nathan Ake, I'm not sure he's going to even start for them, but it's a good signing. It's a backup. Farron, Farron Torres is a very good signing because Leo Sané left, but you already have so much talent up top. They are such a good team. If they buy Koulibaly, this could change. But if Liverpool buy Thiago, it also could change. But Manchester City, I have second just because Liverpool won the lead by 18 points last year. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, they won by 18 points. They have a squad that is guaranteed to get them a very, I mean, not guaranteed, but they're a squad that's proven. You know, I mean, this is a team that you just can't, can't just overlook what happened last year. And, you know, the only thing that worries me about Liverpool is the fact of injuries. You know, the depth that may not be there. If Mane, Salah, Firmino, or I mean, not necessarily, yeah, I mean, if any of the top three gets injured, to be honest with you, it's going to be hard to replace them because they don't quite have that depth. Midfield, they have depth, but none of them are really world class. If Van Dijk gets injured, there could be a problem. He played all of the minutes last year in the Premier League. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, it's similar to Manchester City. Laporte went down injured and they struggled. If Van Dijk goes down injured, Liverpool could struggle. And they've on a run of form from last year, albeit in games that don't necessarily matter that much. After they won the Premier League, they completely dropped in form. And even a little bit before that, if that carries over, there could be a problem. But we'll have to wait and see. For right now, I have Liverpool winning the title. If a couple of different signings are made, this list could completely change. That's that's how it is. But And the one change I did make to my original one was Leicester City in 8th and Everton in ninth. It, it's, it, it, I think it's a strong one for me to do. I think it's a strong table. I think it's going to be super exciting this year. I think it's going to be more exciting than almost any year because last year was already exciting. And all these signings that the top teams are making and the bottom teams, new teams in the league, Leeds United back in after 16 years, old club, um, starting off against Liverpool with James Milner as a Leeds player. It's just it's going to be exciting. There's so many storylines, and I can't wait to get it started. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with my table that I've kind of created here. Let me know. It'll be somewhere on this screen. It'll be there probably the whole time. But if you agree with it, 
Let me know in the comments. If you don't agree with it, even better, let me know in the comments. But I can't wait for the Premier League to return. I hope you guys can't wait either. And I will see you guys next time. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. All I know where I came. Yeah. When the sun sets, I hope that you remember my name. You know. yeah. I don't know where you at. Yeah. I don't know where you stay. Yeah. When I run this money up, everything is going to be okay.